is up YouTube, it's DSM Tuner. I'm here with my finished 420A Mega Squirt 2 turbo build. My last video, I know I spent some time going over the plans for the Mega Squirt. Well, I finally have it done. I just wanted to show you a few things on it. All right, so with the engine bay, ended up doing a full wiring, custom wiring harness for the uh, Mega Squirt 2 because it was a uh, non plug and play version. So I had to wire the entire uh, harness myself. It took quite a long time just figuring out what wires I was able to use from the stock ECU and what wires I could get rid of. Uh, if you recall from my last video, I had quite the number of wires and it was quite a mess. Um, the only wires I ended up keeping from the stock ECU were actually um, things such as the starter wire for the starter motor, um, things like the speed sensor, signal wire back to the gauge, there's a few others. There, I'd say there's probably only three or four. All the rest of them I cut out, so it made my life a whole lot easier when I did this install. But basically I ran all of the wires down through the firewall where the stock um, ECU actually goes through. Um, there's a one massive wiring harness that goes through this firewall kind of down near the footwell of the passenger side so I incorporated that um, location for the mega squirt harness and along with some other wires I had to run through there so a few things I had to use for the setup was a um, using an aeromotive one-to-one -one fuel pressure regulator uh, swapped that in for the FMU that I was running uh, lasted me a good while, but with a Mega Square, you don't need an FMU, you just need a regular regulator. So, Aeromotive is the way to go. Um, I used my existing uh, pressure sensor that runs to the A pillar that I got inside the car, um, and then just the signal line, return line on the bottom, and that's the feed line for the rail. <clears throat> Another thing that 420A Mega Squirt users have to use is a external voltage regulator for their alternator. Um, only because when you do a full standalone uh, and you remove the stock ECU, you're actually removing the um, voltage regulator for the alternator inside there. So you'll need a external regulator, much like this. I got this on eBay for about 60 bucks. Came with all the wiring. Um, was quite easy to install. Um, maybe I'll throw up a diagram on the screen. I noticed a lot of people put them here in place of where the stock ECU would go. Um, I decided to route my bus bar for the battery relocate down on the main frame here of the engine bay. Um, because when you do a battery relocate, you have to attach the main power wire to something. And I had a lot of other 12 volt signal that I had to attach directly to the battery. So I just decided to go with a nice bus bar that was black and kind of out of the way. Um, the fuse box that I showed in the previous video, I believe, I think I showed it. Um, I decided to attach right here. I kind of wanted it tucked away with the stock fuse box. Um, it kind of looks clean. Uh, some people put them on the firewall and I think it looks kind of silly, but I wanted it kind of out of the way. Um, so there's a few things that this fuse box runs. Um, it runs the fuel pump. It runs the mega square ECU itself. It runs the ignition coil and it runs all four injectors. Um, and there's a few other things I have attached to it as well. Another thing I needed for this install was a vacuum block of some sort um, because I had more than three things to run vacuum off of. Uh, I didn't want to tee off of lines. I wanted each uh, signal line to have its own source. Um, I'm kind of against teeing off of vacuum lines and whatnot. Um, so I unbolted the, or unscrewed the stock three port little tree valve, you know, port thing that sits here on the manifold and replaced it with a um, just a barb fitting and ran it to a nice vibrant um, vacuum block. I think I'm running my boost gauge here on the right. I'm running uh, the fuel pressure regulator. I'm running the 
blow off valve and I'm also running the line to the map sensor inside the car for the mega squirt. So the mega squirt box itself I have mounted in the footwell to the passenger side. So this is the cable for hooking up to your laptop. Uh, this is my one DB15 wire for the um, second side of the ignition coil. I think I explained that in my previous video. And here's the main cable harness right here. And then underneath that is the map sensor. You can actually see the, the harness here and the vacuum line runs through the um, already existing port from the uh, original harness. So when I initially got the car running, um, it was a rough start. Um, one of my buddies who's really good at tuning uh, on different platforms actually helped me get it running for the first time. Uh, wasn't really looking for anything powerful, just really wanted something reliable and, you know, turn the key and it just starts. So um, started off just on spring pressure for the uh, wastegate. So on the Han Super 16G, that's set to 8 PSI. So I ran 8 PSI for about a month or so. Put the boost controller back on that I have, manual boost controller. Uh, forget the brand of it, but turned it up to about 10, tuned for 10 PSI, you know, got bored with that. Uh, and then only recently, about two months ago, um, we turned it up to 15 PSI. Really started to work really good then. Of course, got bored with that <laughs> and turned it up to where it is now at 20 PSI. not tuned perfectly but I'm happy with it 20 psi is about the maximum that I can go right now only because the map sensor on the mega square is only a two and a half bar sensor so that's good for just about 23 24 psi uh, the turbo itself I've heard through forms that the efficiency actually starts to drop off um, anything after 23 or 24 PSI as well. So I'm just about maxed out on this turbo. I think my plans now for power are cams and then a dyno tune to really dial in the ignition timing because honestly, I have no idea what this thing is making for power. Um, I get people ask me every day how much power does this thing have and I really can't tell them. I think it's making somewhere around the 300 range. My goal is at least 400 but I would be definitely maxing out the turbo. Um, during the Mega Squirt install, I actually did a complete exhaust, a uh, new exhaust system. I actually found a used Apexy three inch exhaust uh, for sale in my local area. And it actually included the downpipe, which comes off a of GST, so the 4G63. And I knew I could use the catback side of it because um, those are actually interchangeable between the GSTs and 420As. But I wanted to run the downpipe because it was, as well, a 3-inch pipe. But the angles and the pipes are not the same, of course, and the engines are different. So what I had to do was actually flip the downpipe upside down, and it actually managed to bolt up to my existing... Uh, downpipe from the turbo it actually worked out perfectly I think it's a good trick that I'd like to share with some other people so this is the downpipe that you're looking at right now and this is actually a downpipe off of a GST this is the Apexy GST downpipe and all I've done is flipped it upside down it uses the same hangers I flipped it upside down and cut off the 90 degree bend at the end and it just attached to my own uh, 90 degree elbow to that and it bolts right up got it welded and it works perfectly so I have a full 3 inch no cat exhaust and it sounds a lot better than my previous exhaust that was only a 2.5 inch alright so inside the car I just want to start it up and I'll just show you guys how it runs so it starts right up Idle's amazing. This is the Tuner Studio dashboard. I'm actually looking to post a video in the future going more into depth on my settings that I have inside here. Um, 
little bit about AFRs and um, some of my fuel setup that I have going. Because it did take quite some time to get this thing running correctly. Um, this is coming from someone that has never tuned before. Unfortunately, the car is going in storage tomorrow, so I won't have it for quite some time, uh, probably until April of next year, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm looking to post, like I said, during the winter time, something about Tuna Studio and um, how to set it up for 420 days. So, like, comment, subscribe.